we don't actually have reserves, if you want to know the truth. It's a complete misnomer. We have funds that the, the accountants require us to call, you know, uh, they're unrestricted or unallocated. But each of them is tied up. You know, like $900 million is tied up in building proceeds. You sold bonds, you put it in the bank account. For the media, I'd say think of it as a checking account, not as a reserve. So some of it is to build buildings, some of it's, you know, to pay bills at the hospital, some for the physicians. And I'll tell you what the problem the Board of Regents had. It's just the opposite of what you heard this morning. Your risk is, in the last 14 months, our reserves, so-called, are down, I suspect, at the end of the day, by one-third. And the free reserves are gone. That is, the ones that really were not encumbered. That is, they weren't for the residence hall and things like that. You better be alert, and I will be alert, that we are not out of reserves in another year. We actually spent over $300 million in the so-called reserves in the current year, which is more than all the cuts combined for the furloughs. The furloughs were $184 million. We hit $300 million for the reserves, and we're still counting. So the real challenge, and I urge you to pay attention to what Peter Taylor says, is uh, not that we are swirling money away, not that we just have all this largesse. The real challenge is, if we're not careful, and this downturn continues a couple of years, there won't be any checking account, and we will not have no wiggle room uh, whatsoever. It would also be easy to, to say that we shouldn't do anything, that we can eviscerate our, our cadre of faculty. And there is a really big narrative out there that's just a flat out lie. People have not been getting administrators raises. I can't remember the media asking me for it. I just went through every officer at the uh, high officer in the office of the president. Not one of them received a raise. Not one. And yet it's a truism. Everybody agrees the fat cats are getting fatter. Not true. They're, in fact, most of them are paid 10% less than they were paid a year ago. And there's one case where someone got additional duties. I mean, it's, it's just, um, I mean, it's just fabulous the way that the truth never seems to catch up to the lie in the media. And you can accuse us of lots of things. You know, like my jokes aren't funny. That's a serious criticism. But if you actually say, I want to see the data. I mean, I have a chancellor out here. I have a vice president out here. What were they paid last year? What are they paid this year? That's a pretty simple question. File your open records request. And we'll be glad to share that information with you. So it's just not uh, true. It is true we don't ignore competitive markets. And you better believe there are competitive markets. And uh, we have physicians. And if we don't pay them competitively, they'll go elsewhere. We have great professors. They don't want to leave. They love the university. But they can go elsewhere. If, uh, if they're not paid. And believe it or not, there's some people better at deaning than other people. Right? And there's some people who can raise $2 billion for a hospital, and Sue, we're expecting that of you. And you'll be held accountable for that. And I don't think a random person in the population is going to get it done. Maybe I'm wrong, but you look for certain uh, skill sets. So I don't think there are any easy ways. There's not a reserve. Uh, there are uh, that can be used. In the, in the fashion uh, that is being uh, suggested. Uh, the salaries of the administrators aren't being raised. You know, occasionally someone does two jobs. Apparently that's a sin to pay someone for doing two jobs, even you, so though you save money, so we're stopping doing that. And even if you saved all those salaries, it wouldn't come near to the budget cuts that we face. So there are no cheap and easy solutions. I mean, it is just a flaw in the grand narrative that's been put forth. And I understand that. It's easier to say it's Mark Udoff's fault, it's the Board of Regents' fault, you're hiding the money. Then you don't have to face the hard reality, but we have a hard reality. And I do wish, and I say this with all respect, I wish some of the union leaders that are appearing, I want them to go to the homes of the people who were laid off. And I want them to explain why they would not negotiate a furlough one day a month so that those people would not be laid off. I want them to explain it to their children and to their husbands and to their wives, why it is they did that. And I want them to explain why it is in the state of California if they have three days a month of furlough, it's not income adjusted, and why that's unfair. When the people at the top of the income distribution have a 10% pay cut, and the people at the bottom have a 4%, what's unfair about that? Does the state of California do it? No. You have your three days furlough, and it's right across the board, rich and poor alike, middle income. None of that took place. 
and uh, they're taking their furloughs in a mandatory way, and we asked to engage with the unions, and they would not even meet with us, particularly Lakeisha Harrison at the ASME union. Wouldn't give us the time of day. So I'd like the members to question your leadership about how irresponsibly you could treat the own members of your union, and to me that would be a productive uh, discussion to have. And as for the students, we have to arrest this downward spiral, and that's what it is. Um, everyone's been asked to take a share of the pain. 2,000 people will be laid off, 1,000 last year and next year in this budget. There are furloughs for this year, but we need to come out of this with a better university and one that serves the students better. Um, we've asked the students to do much, and I understand that, but we've asked for sacrifices for others. The truth is that this budget will be on the backs of a lot of people. It will be on the backs of administrators and faculty and students. It's not sort of a only you went to the fee increase first. If you read the whole budget document, there's a lot more going on, and in my judgment, Unfortunately, there's too much going on. So these are some unhappy truths. And there is a grand narrative, but facts are facts. And if you want, I invite anyone to bring in their auditor and take a look. These are all true. And uh, we don't have a printing press. I asked Chairman Bernanke. He wouldn't give it to me. I don't blame him. Um, and the fact is, the, in the end of the analysis, we have an unreliable partner. Next year will not be better and the year after that may or may not be better. So the regents and I, I think we need to, 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 to fix it. We need to continue slashing costs. We need to continue going to Sacramento. We are going to Sacramento. They don't have any money. I've been up there over 20 times. We have a great group of advocates. 18,000 letters went to Sacramento in the last three weeks, 18,000. And I predict the numbers will go up even more. We have an effective government relations office. I'd like to see some of our critics march arm in arm with us to the Capitol so that we'd have our combined strength. But when you, when you contact our political leaders, they flat out don't have the money. I saw a letter from Governor Schwarzenegger in response. And the governor, in effect, said, I don't have any money. It's horrible. I didn't want to do this to you. And you know what he suggested? He said, you really, you're not at the most expensive, you're the, among the best universities in the world, but you're not anywhere near the most expensive among the publics, you ought to consider raising fees. That's what the governor said in his letter. And I think he was, he was, he was accurate about that.